yeah. Um, the U definitely uh, hurt me today. <laughs> of all the things that have happened to you this year, that's got to be the most humiliating. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the ribs, the, the benching, all that stuff. <laughs> this, this is by far worse. Feeling better, yeah, feeling better. Uh, got a bunch of treatment and things are looking well. Sean, what did you think you did better Sunday and then what's the next step for you? You know, we made a couple big plays. Um, you know, it's, it's been about team protecting, team protecting, you don't turn the ball over, you know, check the ball down, try to eliminate sacks. Now it's starting to add the big plays to that and we were able to do that a little bit. So now it's about, you know, moving forward in that direction on, you know, scoring as many points as needed to win the game. You know, they have, off the end, they, they have two completely different style of pass rushers. And I think that it's on, you know, us to make sure they're prepared for both styles. So you got one guy who's, you know, six foot eight, you know, 300 plus pounds powering through. And then you have another guy who's a speed guy who can change directions quickly. Uh, so it's on us to make sure that we're prepared for both styles of rushes and, uh, you know, making sure that we're IDing our protections in the right way to make sure there's no free runners at the quarterback. What do you think about, Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't assume so. You know, this is professional football. There's going to be two great guys who are going to step in. Uh, you know, if Sean gets back, he's back. If not, then you know Zach Banner is going to step up and play just as well as he did in the second half of the Detroit game. I think we have a, a really nice offensive line that has been you know working to gel together from one through eight in that room. And, and I think that the guys who stepped in have been doing very well. And uh, looking forward to seeing ball again. You have been getting rid of it quicker. Though. No, I mean, the reason they're getting the ball, you know, away quicker is from the seven sacks that I took in the first game. Uh, you know, I quickly learned that in order to be team protecting, you got to be able to check the ball down and uh, understand where your outlets are. So uh, it has nothing to do with, you know, game planning for offense line, but it has everything to do with me just making sure that the ball's out of harm's way. Jacksonville's defense is ranked number one in, in a bunch of categories, turnovers, against the pass, sacks, all those type of things. When you watch them on film, do your eyes kind of open a little wider just with how athletic and aggressive they seem to be? Yeah, they're talented. You know, they have two uh, corners who've proven themselves out there, which allows them to, to, you know, do a bunch of things within the tackles and has led them to, you know, to be, become the sack leader in the league right now. Uh, but I think it's on us just to make sure that we're executing our job. Uh, you know, every play is designed to make sure that every guy's blocked or it's accounted for. And it's on us to make sure that we're, you know, doing our job to account for everyone out there. Can you talk about uh, Deshaun Gibson, uh, who had played here before, said he expects uh, you guys to go on 16 for the, uh, the Jaguars to shut you guys out on Sunday and also in May. He was never one of my teammates. Um, I don't know what type of guy he is, but I look forward to going out there and executing my job to try to prove him wrong on those comments. Has that created any uh, discussion among you guys? There, there's no discussion needed other than the fact that we're 0-9, looking for our first win. Is the prospect of 0-16, do you think about that at all? Is that, is that a scary thought? Not necessarily. I think that uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars are the, the biggest thought in front of us right now, and it's going to be the next team next week. And it's all about just doing whatever we can uh, to build on this foundation that we're trying to lay here and uh, you know, work towards our first win. I think that this team has continuously gotten better, and we're heading in the right direction, and it's about making sure that we can get over that hill so that we can start winning consistently here. There's a, you know, a mythic, mythical rookie wall that usually comes into play this time of year. Huh? Aside from the ribs, you've been through a lot. How are you feeling mentally and physically? It's mythical. It's, it's mythical. It's mythical. That, that wall is, you know, I'm fine. I think that, uh, you know, we, we've been able to, to stay on the path that coaches set out for, for me in the beginning of the season. I obviously had a couple hiccups, a couple up and downs, uh, but right back on, on the track that we wanted to be on. Um, now it's on me, once again, taking my game to another level and making sure that I continue to put this offense in the best position to score points. You're going to get Corey back this week. Um, obviously, you know, if everything goes okay this week in practice. But um, 
just how excited are you to, to get a player like that back, and, and, and how much of a help is that going to be for you having him back on? You know, he's, he's, a, he's a burner. He's going to be able to allow us to, you know, push the ball down the field vertically, and everyone knows that. Uh, but just to add more playmakers on this team is never going to hurt us. Uh, I think that we were getting a little rhythm with the guys that we had, and to add someone else to that rhythm is going to be a big benefit for us. Is it realistic to expect him to be a 100% efficiency his first game back after eight out? You know, with the with the minor, uh, you know, hand issue, I would expect him to come back ready to go. Um, I know he's been working his butt off to make sure that he is at 100. percent And until he proves otherwise, we're going to expect him to go out there and make the plays he's always made. How much? You, know, you were able to keep the score close most of that game last week, and so just about how that like, you finally used that running game like you can. Yeah. How, how important that's going to be on Sunday. Yeah, um, you know, this is this is AFC football this weekend. Uh, you can expect the weather to be a little chilly. You might expect a little rain, a lot of wind. Uh, it's going to be on us to make sure that our run game drives everything. Um, you know, this offense is, is kind of set up to where uh, with the south offensive line that we have and the great running backs that we have, that the pass is always going to feed off of the run. And we are able to do so in Detroit and look forward to building on it this week. When you look at some of the things that they've done to other quarterbacks uh, this season, the Jaguars, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. But uh, this is professional football. You got to expect that every defense you play against is going to be stout. Um, once again, it's on us to making sure that we're executing our duties and, and learning from the, the guys who have not had a lot of success in the past against them. Sean, is Corey just giving you more options, especially on slams and stuff over the middle? It seems like a lot of your throws have had to be you know, outside the numbers. Yeah, I mean, not necessarily. I think that. Uh, you know, the way that we've been able to game plan, uh, we've had some access outside and we've been able to take it. Um, you know, as we move forward, we're just going to take what the defense gives us when they're going to funnel things in, internal into an eight-man box, why, why throw it inside? Um, but if they, if they do give us that opportunity this week, expect the ball to be in there. So is that why mostly that's not been there? Is it just because they're stacking the box so much? Stop the yeah, you know, here and there. Um, you know, in the AFC particularly, uh, there's a lot of one high coverage. And when you're playing one high coverage and you have outside leverage defenders, uh, everything's being funneled inside. So it's best to, you know, attack the outside during those times. But once again, you got to be able to take what the defense gives you. Um, if you can go out and game plan, uh, precisely, and you can find something over the middle, throw the ball in the middle. If there's something open outside, get it outside. It's all, it's all about uh, you know, throwing the ball where they're not. I know you talked about Duke's playmaking ability, but has he shown you something with the toughness? I mean, here's a play Sunday where he got hit, driven back, and kept going and wound up picking up five yards. It seems like he does that every week. Every week. You know, he's a guy who the first hit typically doesn't take him down, and that's why we like to get the ball in his hands. Um, his toughness is shown out in the field. He's not a big talker. You know, he's kind of a to himself type of guy. And when he's out there, you know, being as electric as he is, and sparks us up as an offense. So it's on us to make sure that, you know, we get the ball in his hands at least once a drive to make him do what he does. Did it mean something? We talked to David after we talked to you on Monday, and he said after he let you get hit like that, he just wanted to fight. He, part of it was on him, part of it was because the guy hit you. Um, I guess what does that mean to you that he has that reaction? Yeah, it's my boy. You know, he, he's he's going to you know stick up for me as much as I'm going to stick up for him. Um, you know, his drive comes from a different way than most. Uh, you know, he takes his personal relationships and his and his uh, camaraderie with his teammates personally, and that's what kind of drives him out in the field. And I look forward to seeing what he's able to do after uh, the comments that he made recently. Did you watch the game with him. Watch the. I watched the first half with him, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> nah. What did you do for the second? Uh, I went up to our hotel room in which we happened to share and, and locked the door to make sure he wasn't watching the second half with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is definitely a bet here. Is that him or, or, or Duke? This is him. I, I owe Duke a pair of tennis shoes. <laughs>